This short video is all about using IL Spy with Unity. And as a bit of background, IL Spy is a program that allows you to open up compiled managed C sharp code. So when you compile code with .NET or Mono, which is what Unity does with the code you write in, you know, C sharp or Unity script in Unity, the first step when this code is compiled is to turn it into something called intermediate language. An intermediate language is also known as IL, and that's where the IL and IL spy comes in. So IL spy can read the intermediate language and actually turn it back into C sharp. You can see what the original code was that created it. And as it turns out, the libraries that Unity provides for us to use, all the stuff in Unity Engine, so like most of the components in Unity, the stuff in Unity Editor for all the editor tools, the UI stuff, event systems, all these kinds of things are in libraries that we can actually open up and take a look at. And that's what we're going to be doing. I'll show you where you can find Unity's libraries and how you can use IL Spy to see what's going on. Now, first up, just to show you a couple of the things, um, for instance, these components right here, we can actually open up and take a look at the standalone input module, event system, the transform component, game objects themselves, lights, cameras, all of these things under the hood are scripts. And what we're going to be able to do is actually open up these scripts and look at what's going on. So you're going to need IL Spy, and you can just grab this, just uh, search for IL Spy and, and go download it. And once you have it, you're going to have to find where Unity keeps its libraries. And it's actually not too bad. Um, it's always in the same place regardless of the version of Unity. It's always within the Unity install directories. So what you want to do in IL Spy is go up to File, Open, and then you want to navigate to wherever you have Unity installed. Go ahead and open up the editor folder, and this is where the actual unity.exe lives. And from this point, we're going to open up this data directory. And this is where all of our libraries and things that we're going to want to access are going to be found. And there's going to be two places primarily we can look for things. The first is this folder called Managed, and this has the big stuff. So this is going to have Unity Engine and Unity Editor. So you want to go ahead and click on one of those and click Open. Now, I've already imported it, so nothing appears, but you'll see it appear in the list for you. And then you can go ahead and open Unity Editor as well. And once you have those, go back up to the Editor data directory and click on Unity Extensions. And this is where a lot of the, basically all of the other libraries that Unity provides are going to be. So for instance, if we open up GUI system, you're going to see UnityEngine.UI. And if you open up Editor, you'll see UnityEditor.UI. And these are the libraries for the new GUI system. So what they call UGUI, not the older system called IMGUI. Uh, you can also find things for the advertisement system, um, the analytics, all these other things. We can open these up and we can pull them into IL Spy. And each one of them will appear as a library in this list. Now, once you have everything set up, you can go ahead and you can actually start poking through these. And you can open up the plus on the left side, and that will show you a list of things that are inside that library. And so you can see inside of Unity Engine, we've got a whole bunch of things that actually appear. We have Unity Engine.rendering, Unity Engine.serialization, all of these things are part of the Unity Engine library. And you'll get the same thing if you open up Unity Editor. Again, it's going to have a whole bunch of stuff under it, some things that if you've done a lot of programming in Unity, you may recognize. So now that we have these open, we can actually start taking a look at some of the code and, and some of the fun classes and things inside. Grabbing a couple things kind of at random, um, fairly recently in the Unity.5x cycle, they introduced something called the custom yield instruction. And you can actually search for that. This button up here is a search. And if I go ahead and type custom yield instruction, we'll see it appear in the list. You can double click this. It'll select it in the left, and you'll actually see the whole custom yield instruction class, and you'll see all of the um, comments and things that were baked into this DLL. So if you've looked on the script reference, or you've poked at this class a little bit, and you saw, oh, there's a reset method, what does it do? Well, we can actually find out that it does nothing. It's kind of provided as a placeholder. So a lot of these t things, uh, when I'm trying to open them, when I'm trying to look under the hood of Unity, a lot of it is I just want to understand what Unity is doing and why, so I can write my own code that works well with Unity. Um, another fun one is the Rect Transform class. Go ahead and grab that at the top here. 
And um, for Rect to transform, and I'm going to open it on the left here so we can see all of the things that are inside that class. And by the way, each of these icons means a different type of thing. So we have fields and properties and methods and everything has a little icon associated so you can very quickly jump to things. Um, and if we look through this list and I want to understand, I don't know, anchored position 3D. What actually happens when I set the anchored position 3D of a rect transform? I can actually see under the hood, this is what Unity is doing. So when I call set, it's uh, extracting the X and Y, saving that to the anchored position, taking the Z, yada, yada, yada. You can actually see what Unity is doing and try and figure out why. Um, another fun place uh, to look is the UnityEngine.UI stuff. There's actually a lot of goodies under there. So I'm going to close down a couple of these. I'm going to open up UnityEngine.UI. And by the way, um, UnityEngine.i, again, these contain multiple different libraries. UnityEngine.ui also contains things like UnityEngine.event systems. So when you see things um, in example scripts, for instance, on the Unity website, you won't always have a specific library for UnityEngine.event systems. The UnityEngine.event systems is found in the UnityEngine.ui library. So looking under UnityEngine.ui, um, they actually did a, a very good job of sort of implementing all of the new UI stuff in a way that you can kind of explore and extend and sort of make your own. So if you're sort of a more intermediate to advanced level programmer, you can actually use this to see how did Unity actually create their, say, image component for their new UI system? How does a, a mask, for instance, actually work under the hood? And you can actually poke through the code um, and you can see a lot of these core methods that a lot of these different rec transform components, a lot of these different UI components have. This on validate is raycast location valid. You're going to see these things over and over again because they're uh, set up in the root classes of, for instance, UI behavior. Um, oh, and by the way, while I'm here, um, you can click to uh, jump around in IL Spy very quickly and easily. I have this analyzer at the bottom, and if you want to analyze something, what you do is you right click on that object and you choose analyze. And analyze is pretty cool because it actually allows you to find, for instance, everywhere that the rect transform of a mask is actually called from. And you can actually see this whole list. This is everything that's going to call into this um, property that we've selected. Uh, that for me is super useful as I'm writing code, trying to figure out the flow of Unity, what calls what, in what ways are different things connected. So you can poke through and there's all kinds of fun things, um, definitely enough to be dangerous. Um, one fun and kind of crazy thing is uh, for any fairly advanced programmers out there, maybe from other backgrounds, um, you can actually extract the C sharp from these DLLs, as you can see IL Spy is doing, you can modify it, you can then compile it out to a new DLL, and you can actually replace the core Unity DLLs. So you can actually change how, for instance, a Vector3 or a line renderer work kind of under the hood in the Unity Engine library. However, there's a limit to how deep we can go, and that's worth mentioning real quick. Uh, these libraries, and let me uh, close these up so we can see the full list again. So these libraries that we see here, Unity Engine, Unity Editor, UI stuff, um, these are the libraries that Unity provides for us as programmers and Unity developers to work with, but these are not the Unity Engine itself. These sit on top of and they expand and they help the Unity Engine, but Unity itself is written in C++. And it is not written as, I'm sorry, it's not compiled out as managed code. And what that means is that when Unity itself is compiled into an executable, when you get that unity.exe, there is no way to reverse it to get the original C++ code that was used to build Unity. So while you can look through these libraries, and you can even modify these libraries, you can't look through the Unity engine itself, and you can't modify the Unity engine itself without some pretty intense hackery and some knowledge of some very low-level computer skills. And you're actually also going to see this limit as you're going through the libraries. Um, because many times in the libraries, the libraries are going to make a call down into Unity itself. And you won't get to see where that call goes or what it does. So just to give you a quick uh, example, um, in the I was poking earlier and in the animation class, um, we have, and again, you have to find the right library from the list. Um, 
uh, as a quick aside, uh, by default, you get all of the core.NET C Sharp libraries, so you can remove these uh, if you find that they're, they're sort of crowding out the Unity stuff that you want to see. Um, but if we're looking through the Unity engine and we find the animation class, um, then we see in this left list, if we open up that class, we're going to see a bunch of methods, and most of these we're not going to have access to the logic for. So if, for instance, I open up crossfade, we're going to see that the method does exist, but it's not going to give us any information about what's going on inside of the method. And we're going to see a couple of keywords. We're going to see things like extern. We're going to see um, uh, some attributes and things up at the top. This is going to be a fairly sort of common signature for things that are being called by the Unity engine or things that are calling down into the Unity engine that we can't see because they're in C++, they're not in C Sharp, they're not in these libraries that Unity gives us. So while this is a very powerful thing, it does have its limits, and sometimes you just aren't able to see what's going on under the hood. But I hope that this opens up sort of a, a brave new world for you to check out what Unity's doing, look through how they've implemented a lot of those common components like lights and things, and see a little bit more what Unity is actually doing under the hood, and maybe use that. Become a better programmer, learn to work with Unity a little bit better, use some of those ideas in your own code.